is great, life-giving. The history of a nation becomes fruitful, soul-elevating, great, so soon as it believes. He said, is it not? He says, is it not? As if a spark had fallen. One spark on a world that seemed black and noticeable sand. But lo, the sand proves explosive powder, blazes heaven high from Delhi to Granada. This is what Islam did for you. And it's the role that Allah chose you, an Ummi people, and sends an Ummi prophet, and he chooses your language to become the vehicle of his message to mankind. It's a role that originally Allah Bari Ta'ala chose for you. You didn't choose it. You didn't deserve it. Wallah, you know. Allah chooses. Sometimes it's amazing that sometimes you earn it and Allah gives you the fruits, the rewards. I can't see anything about the Arabs for which they said they deserve this revolution should come to them. That this Nabi should come, Khatam al Nabi should come in their midst. The first time when I came to this holy land and I was going from Medina to Makkah by bus and I'm watching, I'm seeing the sights. What? Well, there's nothing to see. Black rocks. Burned by the sun over millions of years. No life, nothing, no vegetation. And in the, in the bus, air-conditioned bus, we had the students from all over the world, Muslim students, from Germany, from France, from all over. They had come to a conference and we were t brought from Riyadh to Medina and from Medina we were going to Makkah in the Ihram. And in the bus, a young Muslim, Arab, from Germany, student, he is sitting next to the driver and on the internal mic he is re reading the, the Quran. He's reciting from Surah Baqarah. He was reciting. Ya Bani Israel, askuru ni'mati allati anamtu alaykum wa anni faddal tukum ala alameen and on and on. You know, he's reading all this. While he's reading, I can understand. I, can't, I don't know Arabic as a language, but I can follow because these verses I know. And I'm wondering, I said, these words, while we're passing through there, they don't fit in here. Today, today, in the... In the, was the 20th century, those words, you just go out in the wilderness, among the rocks and the desert, burn sand. The sand is not even beautiful. <laughs> Look, I'm not insulting. Please, don't be too hypersensitive. Your sand is not beautiful. You know that? It's burnt sand. Your sand is black. Coming from Riyadh to Medina, I'm looking through the plain, I can see the sand is not that yellow golden sand they show us in films. I think maybe in the Nevada desert, you see, when they do those filmings, they're about Arab scenes. But here... The sand is black. You know, there you see the golden undulating hills. Gold, gold, gold. There's no gold here. It's all black. In this environment, 1,400 years ago, these words of the Quran were being read, recited. Elixir of life, knowledge, guidance is given to you in this environment. Miracle of miracles. This is miracle. Where did this man get it? Even today it doesn't fit in. Wallah, those verses don't fit in in the environment. Allah chose you. So it blazes heaven high from Delhi to Granada. He did it. He transformed you. He chose you and your language as a vehicle of his message. And your ancestors did the job. They did the job. They had that pioneering spirit. They came to my country. I come from India, on the west coast. They came to do business with my father's ancestors. They brought the dates to barter for our muslin cloth, our turmeric, our tamarind. They went to Malaysia, they went to Indonesia, they went to the east coast of Africa, they went to the west coast of Africa, and wherever they went, the people were attracted to them. He said, these are good people. He said, we like to be also one of you. He says, very easy. Give us their hands. He gave their hands. He said, shahada. Said, what is that? Say, la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. So my ancestors, they uttered that. He said, now you are a Muslim. From now on, you mustn't drink, you mustn't gamble, you mustn't do this, you mustn't do that. They taught us. They civilized us. My people were worshipping men and monkeys, elephants and snakes. We were taking the urine of the cow and sprinkling, uh, sprinkling on ourselves for purification. Yes. I said, you know, the Arabs, what they did for us. Look, forget everything, man. What he has done for me, had it not been for the Arabs, where are, would I be today? Saying, worshipping the cow and running after the urine. I've seen them. My own people. You know, in the temples of India, I've seen you know, how they prod the cow in the buttock. And when she lets go, they, they gather and... Sh I've seen it with my own eyes. This was what I was hearing before, but I've seen it with my own eyes. My people, they do that still. Morari Desai, the Prime Minister 
of the greatest democracy, the biggest democracy in the world, India, you know, the largest democracy. He drinks six to eight ounces of his own urine every day. <laughs> He's my maternal uncle. You know that? Yes. Mera mamu hota hai, mamu. Look, little wonder, you know, I didn't understand. You see, I was a little boy going around with my father. My mother had died in India. And whenever my father saw an Arab, he used to go to the Arab, shake his hands, kiss his hands. And he makes me also. I was doing that. Arab says, he says, these people here, they saved us from all that. It's a role. Allah chose you for that. He has chosen you for that. Every Muslim is supposed to do the job. But primarily it is the Arab's duty. It is your duty first. Your, the Quran is still in your language. And Allah has given you certain qualities. There are certain things. Why did he choose you? There is something in you that Allah chose you for this. Go out and deliver the message. It's your role. If you don't play the role, the repercussions, the curse, you'll have to pay the price. And we are paying. We have paid the price so many times. Why won't we learn? In Spain we did it. We paid the price. 800 years we ruled in Spain. You know, 800 years. Power is in our hands. Riches, opulence. 800 years. We didn't do the job. Education, livelihood, everything is in your hand. And you couldn't do the job. Allah describes a scene. He describes a scene. He says, Kam taraku min jannatim wa uyun. So how many were the gardens and the fountains they left behind? How many were the gardens and the fountains they left behind? Wazu'im wa makamin kareem. And cornfields and monumental buildings. وَنِعْمَةٍ كَانُوا فِيهَا فَاكِهِينَ And wealth and the amenities of life in which they took so much delight. كَذَلِكَ أَوْرَسْنَاهَا قَوْمًا آخَرِينَ Thus other people were made to inherit these things. فَمَا بَقَتَ لَيْهِمُ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضُ وَمَا كَانُوا مُنْزَرِينَ And neither the heavens nor the earth shed a tear for them, nor was respite given to them anymore. They read this. Our Arab brethren, they were reading this. In Spain, for 800 years they were reading this and they understood what they were reading. But they couldn't see the implication. They were laughing at the Egyptians. Firaun, fool. You know, he didn't learn a lesson. Nine plagues, plagues after plagues. He's reading the Quran, but he's looking at the Egyptians. Laughing at them. <laughs> you see, the fool didn't learn a lesson. He doesn't know that he's in the firing line now. He was in the firing line, but he doesn't see that. He blasted. This is mad. We always laugh at the other guy. In Baghdad, Samarkhan, Bukhara, and the Harun al-Rashid, Mamun al-Rashid, the veritable fairy land. Yes. On the borders with the Mongols. They were not prepared to share the faith with them. No, these barbarians, what can they understand about Islam? The Spanish people, pig eaters, wine people, what can they understand about Islam? No, this was the attitude. So, these people laughing at them, the fools in Spain, they should have learned a lesson. They don't learn a lesson. In India, thousand years, the Muslims rule. Reading the Quran, of course, we have a good excuse. The Indian Muslims, we don't understand the Quran. <laughs> so, I said, the Arab, it is his duty. Primarily, Allah chose you, and it's a role you have to play once more again. Allah has given you a second inning. I believe. You know, in cricket, you have a first inning, you have a second inning. Allah has given you a second inning. I'm telling the Arabs, he's given you a second inning. If you don't come right, I said, you won't have third chance. It's finished. It's finished for good. Allah has given you a second chance. But make the best of it. Uh, see, this is, by the way, uh, I says, you know, religiously, also, Hazrat Isa, alayhi salam, he gives us a standard of judging greatness. He said that among those born of women, means every human being, everybody is born of a woman, including himself. He said among those born of women, there has not risen another greater than John the Baptist. John the Baptist is Yahya alayhi salam. He says the greatest human being that was ever born, a prophet, is Yahya alayhi salam. And further down he says, 